Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back with you with our uh, Romans chapter 1 teaching. This is part 8 of Declared to be the Son of God with Power, part 2. The declaration of the Holy Spirit is the declaration with power. This is what Jesus did for all on the cross it, 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 to atone for all sin. And this is according to the Holy Spirit that, that He works by faith in what Jesus Christ has made the way so that we all could go free and live our lives in that freedom, in that deliverance, in that victory as, as we look exclusively to that avenue and that avenue alone, knowing that it was the blood being applied to the doorpost of the, of the house that led the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. The same way it is for the children of God today, when we look to what Christ has done for us at the cross, and we receive it by simply believing it, and we experience the faith of the Son of God, He leads us out of the bondages that we found ourselves in from living a lifestyle full of sin. But the only way that we can continue to experience God at work in our lives by His grace is as we continue to look to the sacrifice of Calvary and know that this is the declaration of God, of the Son of God with power and it's according to the, holy, the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Meaning the Holy Spirit is not speaking anything other than what God has sent His Son to do for us all at Calvary. And I know that's where most, they, 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 they get off track, they felt it, they called it God, but it wasn't, it was just feelings and emotions. I'm thankful that we have the Holy Spirit that bears witness with our spirit, but it's according to truth. Truth has a name. His name is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He's the one who guides us and directs us into all the truth of God's Word, but it can only be experienced in our lives when we believe it by faith in that sacrifice that Jesus died to atone for the sins of mankind, for all of humanity, so that we could be saved and live that way every day. But if we're not experiencing it through the grace of God by believing in the sacrifice of Calvary alone, then, then, then it's because we're not believing what is right. We're, we're, we're still out here trying to earn it and do it ourselves and, and call it God. It, it, it's because we want to do our own will instead of allow the will of the Lord to be carried out in our hearts and lives. You see, the Spirit of holiness is always going to lead us into a holy and sanctified life, but that can only be carried out according to the righteousness of God that's found only and exclusively within the avenue that God has provided for all to be able to come before Him to the throne of grace so we could obtain the mercy and the grace that we need right here in time of need. And that's Christ giving His sinless life on that old rugged cross so that we all could go free. But the freedom that we experience in our lives can only be experienced daily by faith in that sacrifice as we continue to believe that that's the way that God works as we continue to learn to live our lives saved through His grace. But if we could, let us open up with a word of prayer and you can uh, grab your Bibles and turn with me tonight to Romans chapter 1. We'll begin in verse 4. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord God, for the time that we've set aside, Lord, to come before You, Lord, to be able, Lord, to look into the Word, Lord, into the Scriptures, Lord. Through the avenue, Lord, every day that we have, Lord, we're drawing nearer to You, nearer to the rapture of the church, and nearer to that day, Lord God, that's approaching, Lord, as, as this path of the just that's, 
That's shining brighter and brighter, Lord God, to bring us to that perfect day. And Lord, I just ask You, Lord, to continue to move and minister, Lord, to touch hearts and lives and to bring about victory through faith in Your sacrifice over every manner of bondage, every manner of sickness. I pray for healing, Lord God. I ask You, Lord, to move, Lord God, upon the hearts and lives of Your people, Lord, to touch them in a special way, Lord, through this broadcast, Lord, that they may have eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand, Lord God. Lord, that we may walk in that victory by faith, by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us at Calvary, Lord. And in Jesus' holy name we pray and we give You all the glory and all the praise. And everybody said, Amen. In Romans chapter 1, verse 4, it says, "...and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead." The declaration of the Son of God with power is according to the Spirit of holiness. That's what the Holy Spirit makes us. He makes us a holy people set apart, consecrated unto the God that we serve by, by being separated unto the Gospel of God. But it's not separation unto the Gospel if it's not separation unto the Gospel in its righteous context, which, is, which, which alone it, it, we see Christ and what He did for us all at Calvary. You see, there would have, no, there would have been... He desires to cleanse us, to help us, to grow in the grace and knowledge and understanding to glory in the sacrifice of Calvary so we can get up and walk in the victory and be overcomers and not overcome any longer because we're not trusting in the things that are not right and pleasing to the Lord, but we're trusting in the blood of the Lamb which has been applied to the doorpost of our hearts by faith. You see, we believe it. And then we receive it. We believe it. And then we experience the victory of it because we're experiencing the God that we serve through the simple act of obedience from the heart to what Jesus Christ has done for us all at Calvary. So we're no longer just trying to live in a once saved, always saved mentality, but we're, we're learning to walk in victory and deliverance, knowing that I've got to continue in this thing daily because I can lose my salvation if I don't continue to believe in what Jesus has done for me at Calvary. You see, there's no such thing as once saved, always saved. Jesus has done everything that we need on the cross. And He said, "...for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." But if we don't continue to call upon His name, then we're not going to continue to walk in the salvation plan of God and be set free by the blood of Jesus Christ and learn by learning how to live this way every day. You see, God's gotten more for us. We will never exhaust the Word of God. But if it's not tied to the cross of Christ, then the experience of, of the victory and the sanctifying process that God desires to carry out in our hearts and lives will be lacking. You see, we need the experience, the application by faith through grace every day so we can know that the blood, not, not just have somewhat of a... a, 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 a a knowledge that, that Jesus did it, but an experiential understanding that I know, that I know that He's done it for me. And when I'm walking in that, when I'm understanding that, when the enemy tries to come into my life, he's not going to persuade me to turn from it because I know that the blood is applied and I've received everything that I need. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ to carry me on through in His victory by faith every day as long as we continue to believe. You see, it took the declaration 
of a finished work by the resurrection from the dead. And this is according to the spirit of holiness. So the cross alone is the power of God to change us and to make us holy. You see, we can't change ourselves. We can't make ourselves holy. Yeah, we can go out here and get a haircut and, and, and shave different ways and change, change clothes and all different kinds of things. We can go on a diet, lose weight. You can lift weights and get pumped up and all those different things. But let me tell you, those characteristics are lacking because it's trying to, trying to do it within our own strength and abilities to change ourselves when God is not working in those things and we see that that is a, a result of the self life that's what most people are doing nowadays is they're trying to live into themselves but God desires to come into the heart God desires to change that thing inside us that is lacking and that needs righteousness and holiness and truth so we can experience the victory that He's provided for all so that we could go free and live that way every day through faith in His sacrifice at Calvary. And I know there's some out there that they think that we're just saying that the cross, our faith is in a wooden beam and is it even worth getting into? You know what I'm saying? The blood is the answer for everything that we need. Jesus died on the cross because that was what was a curse to God. And it took the death of His, His, His perfect sinless life on that old rugged tree to save us and to set us free. But when we look to the sacrifice, when we look to Calvary, what we're doing is acknowledging a perfect work that God carried out in His Son for us to be received by faith and live that way every day and experience the sanctifying truth of a God who loves us. And He gave His only begotten Son to die on that, rugged cross, that old rugged cross for us. That's why the cross is the answer. Because that's the Word of God. He said, Lo, I come in the cross instead of taking it up. You see, God desires us to take up the cross, to look to the victory, to look to the power of what He's done for us on that old rugged tree so He can develop holiness in our lives. But without the experiential knowledge and understanding of learning to live a crucified life, we'll never experience holiness because we're not following righteousness. You see, the blood must and it has to be applied through faith. But the only way to continue to experience the grace of God is to continue there daily through a denial of self to where sin can no longer rule or reign because Jesus Christ has already made the way. He's already paid the price. He's already gave His life. And it is finished. It's a finished work. He was raised from the dead on the third day by the glory of the Father. And He told us even so we also should walk in newness of life. What He's saying is you should experience what I've done for you at Calvary and knowing that your old man's been crucified with Him, that the body of sin would be destroyed, that from now on we wouldn't serve sin, but we would serve Christ through faith in His sacrifice, which is the only righteous avenue of God that there is. Anything else is self-righteousness and it has no power to change. You see, everything that we are, anything we can do in and of ourselves has to all be laid down at the foot of the cross. Jesus Christ paid the price. He made the way. He gave His life so that we could all be saved, but not only saved, learning to live that way every day with an experiential knowledge of what it is to be a holy child of the King. Holiness is not going to be experienced 
outside of righteousness. And when we're experiencing holiness, it's because we're looking to the righteous avenue that God has made through the death of His only begotten Son that we should partake of it every day by faith and grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Turn with me here tonight to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. It says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. We are to abstain from all manner of fornication because we are a chosen generation. You can find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And as a chosen generation, there's only one way to be holy, and that's to look to the cross through what Jesus Christ has done for us all at Calvary. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 2, it's looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's a finished work. It's something that can be trusted in and depended upon. It's something that is not lacking. It was perfect. You see, when we look exclusively to that perfect work, then we can have a spotless righteousness because we have a spotless lamb who gave his life on that old rugged tree. That means when I fail, when I mess up, when I bite off a big old piece of stupid, if I'll come back to the cross and ask God to forgive me, I have an advocate with my Father. His name is Jesus Christ and He did it all at Calvary. You see, He's our mediator. He's the one who stood in between God and man. He's the one who reconciled and made the way for us to be saved and set free from sin, but it doesn't stop there. God desires deliverance. He desires a sanctified and holy people that's set apart from the things of this world that's no longer trusting in things that are not right and pleasing to Him. For far too long, The church has erected altars, but not the altar of the cross. Not the victory of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's been anything and everything under the sun, but it's all had no power to save the life, only to destroy it because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if we'll look to the sacrifice, then we'll be able to be cleansed and set free from all sin and growing in that grace and knowledge and understanding every day because the blood has been applied. We can't be held by anything as long as we'll look to the cross. I didn't say things wouldn't try to attach themselves to you. I said they can't hold you because the blood's been applied. And when we look to the sacrifice, the victory that God provided through the death of His only begotten Son, then we can experience that righteousness and and the Holy Spirit, the One who is holy, who lives inside of our hearts and lives, who made His abode with us from the moment we said yes to Christ, will cleanse the temple of God that we are from all unrighteousness. But you see, we got to lay down our works at the foot of the cross. we got to learn to no longer trust and depend upon self, but to, but to depend upon the blood for everything that we need. So that perfect work of righteousness will continue to lead us into that which is right. In Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, I believe it is, or somewhere around in there, it says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him. 
and He shall direct your paths. You see, when we get to lean into our understanding, there's no direction. But when we're acknowledging Him through faith in what He did for us at Calvary, there is the direction on the path of righteousness that we're called to live our lives through by faith every day. But if we're not experiencing the grace of God by the faith of the Son of God, then we're not going to be being directed in the right path of righteousness to live our lives unto the Son of God because we're trusting in self. Self must be denied so Christ can be experienced in our hearts and lives every day by faith. It's the grace of God that does the work. You see, the law of God pointed to the holiness and righteousness of a Redeemer who would come in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn our sin in His flesh on the cross so that by faith in His sacrifice, the righteousness of the law would be fulfilled in our hearts and lives so that we could express the holiness of our God. Outside of faith in the cross alone, there is no expression of God's holiness because we're not looking to His righteousness. We've got to cling to Calvary so the righteousness of God that we are learning to live our lives by will we'll continue to allow the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts and lives, cleansing us, separating us, consecrating us to the, to the Word of the Lord and to the work of the Lord so that souls can be saved and lives can be changed and hearts can be rearranged. If you would... Turn with me here tonight to 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 through 14. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. It says, "Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children." not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. You see, he said not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. That, that means we're no longer that person anymore. All the works of the flesh have got to be laid at the foot of the cross so we can have the understanding and knowledge of our Lord and Savior directing our paths on that path of righteousness daily by the Holy Spirit because we're experiencing the grace of God at work in our hearts and lives that saves us and teaches us how to live what we've been given through faith in the sacrifice of Calvary when we believe. But it's not just a one-time thing. I've got to continue to keep believing. You see, this is where the fight of faith comes in. This is where the constant striving for righteousness comes into our hearts and lives through every situation and circumstance. i got to believe what Christ did for me on that old rugged cross. When the enemy comes in my life, when my old flesh gets to acting up, I, through everything that comes our way, so that these things that are trying us, and as Peter would say, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, the things that are to try you. But rejoice knowing that it's working patience in our lives. And you can go back to Romans chapter 5 on that one because patience is bringing forth experience and experience hope. And hope makes not ashamed of the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You see, we ain't got nothing to be ashamed about because we know who we serve. We know what we're looking to. We know that our eyes have been opened and we see Jesus. But you see, we need to continue to see more and more and more of Christ because the greater understanding that we have of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the more we're going to walk in that righteous path that God directs us in through that same faith that we receive from the moment that we believe so we can get up and live our lives in that victory 
and shine that light so that others can see. The blood of Jesus, it is the answer. Because that's what God sent His Son to do for all at Calvary. As obedient children, and there's only one way to be obedient, and that's to obey from the heart what Christ did for us on the cross, that we put off the old man, which speaks of us no longer being ruled by the sin nature because we've been crucified with Christ. It can only be carried out in our hearts and lives as we are obeying from the heart. In Romans 6, verses 17 and 18, it says, But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. You see what, what made us free? The foundation has already been laid. And no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, the form of doctrine that has been given to us that has made us free from the dominion of sin when we did one thing and that was simply believed what God has sent His Son to do for us all at Calvary. But it's only as obedient children obeying from the heart. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. Verse 17, 18, being then made free from sin, you became. You see, it doesn't just stop it at I'm free from sin, now I can go out here and live however I want. No, God brings us to something. He brings us to being servants of righteousness, being then made free from sin. I freed you from sin so I can cause you to walk in my righteousness. I've given you life and given it to you more abundantly so you can shine the light of the Gospel so others can see the path of righteousness that they need to be walking in. But it can only be experienced by faith when the Gospel of grace is preached to the entirety of the world. But grace is not going to work outside of the avenue of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And we're not going to experience it teaching us if we're not walking in what Christ has done for us through the hearing of faith coming into our hearts and lives by His grace every day. We've got to move on in past a Sunday to Sunday meeting. We've got to move on in to an experiential understanding that it's a daily process that God desires to carry out in our hearts and lives so we can walk in the understanding of who Jesus is through application. The blood must be applied not only for salvation, but for daily sanctification. You see, the cross is the answer for all things. But until we look to that as our only answer, then we'll be out here trying to find other things to live our lives by now that we've been saved. Let me tell you, the other things is what's killing the church. The other things is what's causing the whole head to be sick and the body full of sores. The other thing is the poison in the pot. And there's only one thing that's going to bring healing to the heart and life, and that's when the Word of God is preached in its righteous context and souls begin to receive it through that one simple avenue of, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe that the cross is what works. So as obedient children, and there's only one way to be obedient, and that's to obey from the heart that what Christ has done for us on the cross, that we put off the old man which speaks of us no longer being ruled by the sin nature because we've been crucified with Christ. No longer slaves of sin, but servants of righteousness. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22-23, through 23, and it says this, it reads this way, that you put off 
concerning the form of conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, there's a renewing that has to be taking place. But if we are not seated up underneath the only avenue that faith can come, and that's through the hearing, through hearing the Word of God in its righteous context, which pertains to Christ and the cross, then the faith of the Son of God cannot produce righteousness in our hearts and lives to set us apart from everything else and showing forth the holiness of our God. Because we're still out here trying to do it ourselves. If we're not looking exclusively to that path of righteousness, then we'll be found out here trying to do it ourselves. God's not working in self-ambition, in, in, in any kind of self that you want to think of. God ain't working. That, that old man's got to be crucified and denied every day by faith in the blood of the Lamb is God's only way. And we've got to look to the cross for direction. Not a wooden beam what Jesus did there. The cross is the answer. It's what He did on an old rugged tree. He said the preaching of it is the power of God. What Jesus Christ has done for us at Calvary is the only way that we're going to put off the old conversation and walk in newness of life every day. In verse 24 it says, "...and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness." If we are not learning that the only way that we can put on the new man is through the preaching of the cross, which alone is the power of God, then we're still stuck in the old man, dominated by sin, trying to produce holiness within our own strength and abilities and calling it the righteousness of God when He's not anywhere near it because He only works in truth. In Psalms 33 and 4, it says, For the Word of the Lord is right, and all, not some, all His works are done in truth. Jesus claimed to be that truth. The Holy Spirit is the one, the Spirit of truth, who produces the truth of who Christ is in our hearts and lives through what Jesus has done for us all on the cross so that we could receive of Him and be able to experience newness of life. But if you would, turn with me here this this evening uh, to Leviticus chapter 14. Leviticus chapter 14. Beginning in verse 14. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering... And the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. The blood upon the right ear speaks of the only way to be cleansed from all sin. And that's the Word of the Lord preached in its righteous context, which is Christ in Him crucified, so that faith can come by hearing. And when faith comes by hearing, we'll be doing right and we'll be walking in righteousness. The reason why most are not hearing right is because most preachers nowadays are not preaching what's right. When we come back to the righteous avenue of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, then we'll be out here doing right. That means the works of the Lord that He's desired for us to walk in. The focus will be upon the sacrifice and not the person carrying out the work. We've got to come back to the cross. We've got to come back to the righteous avenue to where self can be denied so lives can be changed and hearts rearranged. And victories won in people's hearts and lives 
so bondages can be broken, so addictions can be laid to rest at the feet of Jesus. So broken hearts can be mended back together. So bruised spirits can be healed. You see, that's what Jesus came to do. He came to show us the way through making the way for us on that old rugged tree so that we all could be saved, but not only saved, learning to live that way every day by faith in the blood being applied to the doorpost of our hearts so we could live righteous and holy lives, ones that's pleasing unto the Lord. In Leviticus 14, verses 15 through 16, it says, And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it upon the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times, speaking of perfection, before the Lord. The Holy Spirit is only working through a perfect work And there's only one perfect work that the Word of God symbolizes throughout the entirety of its context. And that's Jesus Christ dying on an old rugged cross for our sins. When we take hold on that, we're allowing the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, to do the work of the sacrifice that Christ carried out in atoning for all sins in our hearts and lives every day. But misplaced faith will not cause us to walk in righteousness. It will cause us being disobedient children. But when we look to the cross, when we look to the blood that's been applied through faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit can work and lead us and guide us and direct us in that path that is right. The only way that we can be cleansed from all sin is through faith in the blood. But it has to be the Holy Spirit carrying the work out in our hearts and lives because the cross demanded a perfect work. God demanded a perfect work. The cross was a perfect work. And the only way we can walk in the perfection of the sacrifice is through simply believing in what Jesus died there to give us, and that was eternal life. That's why He came. But eternal life didn't come to us until Jesus was seated at the right hand of the throne of God stating that what He did at Calvary was enough. You see, it was finished before the foundation of the world. And when He hung His head, He said right before that, it is finished, and He gave up the ghost. And then by the glory of the Father, He was raised from the dead by the power and person of the Holy Spirit. And as long as our faith is in that sacrifice at Calvary, we will be raised from the dead with Him, no longer dominated by sin, but set free by the blood of Jesus Christ and experiencing the liberty that He has provided for all to walk in through simply believing in that avenue that is right. Righteousness cannot be experienced outside of looking to the One who is righteousness and where that righteousness was offered for all. And that's on the old rugged cross so that we all could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But it's not something that we make ourselves. It's what the Holy Spirit does within our hearts and lives. Putting out the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. By the circumcision made without hands. You see, it's what the Holy Spirit does in our hearts and lives. He's the one that brings forth holiness and righteousness and gives gives us a desire to live for Him. Anything that we try to do outside of faith in the cross 
is putting law before the people of God and causing a stumbling block before them and causing them to fail of the grace of God because we're not pointing exclusively to that righteous avenue of Jesus Christ and what He died to give us all eternally through His death at Calvary. And that was an abundant supply of the grace of God so we could experience that which is right daily, sanctifying us in this truth and making us holy because we are a chosen generation. In Leviticus 14, verse 17, it says, And of the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear. If you'll notice in verse 14, it was the blood that was being put upon the ear, the thumb, and the toe of the right side of the body. But now it's the oil symbolizing that the Holy Spirit is only going to work through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's not working in anything else. Everything else is just chills and thrills and emotions that will carry you astray away from the things that are of God. But when we look to the sacrifice, the Holy Spirit will keep us the course as long as we continue to believe in that which is right. But it's our choice. we got to believe it. And when we're believing it, we'll be found clinging to it. And then the Holy Spirit will direct us in those paths of righteousness every day for the name of the Lord. And of the rest of the oil that is in His hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of Him who is to be cleansed. That means when faith is coming, it's the Holy Spirit bringing it to the heart and life of the believer because the blood is being preached. You see, outside a righteous context, the Holy Spirit cannot move. We tie His hands. But when we point to the cross, the power of God can make us what God desires us to be, and that's a holy people. A holy people that's been set apart to glorify the Lord through faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of Him who is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of His right hand. That speaks of our works, what we do, that can only be carried out through believing in the blood of Jesus Christ so we can receive the direction of the Holy Spirit to, to, to go out here and do what God has called us to do and present a perfect Savior through a perfect work. The Holy Spirit's not working in anything else. He's only working in truth. And truth has a name and it's Jesus. And upon the thumb of His right hand and upon the great toe of His right foot and upon the blood of the trespass offering. You see, all this signified what Jesus Christ would do because of the price that He paid for all in making a way for all to be saved so that the Holy Spirit could come in a new and living way and dwell inside of God's people and and affect the work of righteousness in our hearts and lives as long as we would continue to believe in that which is right and allow God to move in us, to work in us, to dwell in us, to live in us, to be everything that we need but can only be received as we continue to look to Calvary. You see, the blood being applied allows the Holy Spirit to do the work that needs to be carried out in our hearts and lives, sanctifying a people, separating us from everything that's not right, and causing us to be holy so we can express the holiness of the God that we served. Of the God that we serve. But outside of righteousness, there is no true holiness. It has to be right. 
It has to be rightly divided. Or it's just us going to be out here doing it and calling it God and God's not anywhere near it. But the Word of the Lord is not going to be righteously divided so we can point to that which is right if we aren't learning to walk in the righteousness of God through faith in where His righteousness was imputed to the believing heart. And that's at the foot of the cross from the moment that we said yes to Jesus Christ. And we did that one thing and just simply believed that the cross is all that we need. You see, Calvary is all that we need because it's there that God offered Himself to be received through the perfect work so that we could experience the life-giving flow of the Holy Spirit working in our hearts and lives every day. The oil on the right ear speaks of the only way that the Holy Spirit can cause faith to arise in our hearts and lives. And that's through the preaching of the cross which will cause us to do right and to live right before the Lord. Faith ain't coming if it ain't, be, if it ain't the blood being preached. And if the cross is not being preached and we're experiencing the faith of the Son of God that gives us the overcoming power to walk free from the dominion of sin, then our works are not going to be right. And if our works ain't right, then we ain't living right either. But when we come back to the cross, when we come back to what God works in, He he can begin to work in our hearts and lives and direct us on that path of righteousness every day. So everything that we set our hands to, it it will be because we've been instructed of Him by simply believing in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But if the cross is not the focus, then the works are wrong already. And so is our lifestyle because we've left the only thing that works, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Leviticus 14 and 18. It says, And the remnant of the oil... Hang on before we go there. Let me read these last notes. Leviticus 14 and 17, the notes from them that I have in my Bible. And Until the blood is applied, the Holy Spirit cannot affect the work of righteousness in our hearts and lives. I said that but it already, but it's worth repeating. Until the blood is applied, the Holy Spirit cannot affect the work of righteousness in our hearts and lives to where we move past I've, I've once been saved to where I'm now learning to live saved. To where now, through faith in the sacrifice, I'm experiencing the grace of God through that same faith that's coming through the Word of God being preached in its righteous context, causing me to walk in the victory and in the freedom and in the deliverance that God has provided for us all to go free. You see, Jesus always leads us in triumph. He never leads us in failure and defeat. If you're living in failure and defeat, it's because that's where your flesh is leading you to because you're not going to Calvary so that God can meet your every need through a Savior who loves you and gave His life for us on an old rugged tree so that we could go free and live that way. Not every once in a while, every day. The blood has to be applied through faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Leviticus 14 and 18, and I'll be closing with this right here tonight. It says, "...and the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him who is to be cleansed. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord." This speaks of salvation being by grace through faith and no other way. And that the Holy Spirit only works through what Jesus did for all 
at Calvary. You see, there is no cleansing outside of the cross of Christ. There's no freedom from sin. There's no deliverance from bondage. There's only slave to all the wrong things outside of the cross of Christ to where we become the servants of righteousness. But you see, when we're serving in righteousness, we've got to be learning through the hearing of faith so that our works will be right. So that God can direct our footsteps on the paths of righteousness for His name's sake because we're following Jesus Christ. But that's only going to take place as self is being denied. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you were here tonight or maybe later on. I know that there was internet trouble. I saw it happen a couple times, but we just kept preaching anyway. The Gospel's all we need. And I will be uploading this later on. And I thank you for those of you who have tuned in and and stayed with me here tonight. Uh, The Lord is worthy of our praise and of our glory and of our honor. And as long as we'll continue to look at that path as, as God's only way, He'll, He'll continue to affect the righteousness that we need to be living our lives by every day and show us more of Jesus Christ as we're learning to live saved. You see, that, that, that's the mandate of God right there. Is we got to live this thing. We've got to live what we're preaching. And we've got to preach what we're living. And when we're doing that, then Christ can be magnified, the body edified, and God glorified. Well, praise the Lord. Stay tuned with me on Tuesday nights. Uh, Next Tuesday, we'll be coming back at it again with Romans chapter 1, part 9. I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing in these teachings and what He's doing in our hearts and lives as well. Uh, Stay tuned with us uh, for Roman with me, for, or Jaden will be with me uh, next weekend too, but uh, this coming Saturday for our Romans chapter 6 teaching. Uh, I know that the Lord has many more things in store for us, and all we've got to do is just continue to cling to that nail scarred hand of Christ as the only way. And again, thank you for being here, and, and God bless you all. And, Until next time, stay determined not to know anything else save Jesus Christ and Him crucified.